Hey, this is Mr. Kelly and Holder. We're going over the review. This is the actual review itself. We're looking at the questions that I gave you in the file that if you download it and try it, you should try to do these by yourself before we go into them. Uh, so here we go. The first section of the review talks about evaluating where you have to plug numbers in. All right, so I'm not going to do every single problem, but I will go over certain problems, and I'll go over number two. Number two is important because we have so many negatives here. So we have RP minus P to the third. So I'm going to sub that in. I'm going to use parentheses every time I sub in. So we get negative 5. That's R. P is negative 3. So times negative 3. Minus, what do we have? P is negative 3 to the third power. Look at all of those negatives and minus signs. You got one, two, three of them. Four, and then you got to use a third power here. So according to GEMDAS, we want to do our grouping symbols. There's nothing to do inside our grouping symbols, so that's done. The next uh, step is exponents. So we need to cube, we need to raise to the third power that last negative three. So it's negative three times negative three times negative three. That equals negative 27. Don't forget about the minus that's there. And let's not forget about the first two here. Now, if you want, you can multiply those, but I'll wait till the next step, just to be clear. Okay, next step is multiply. So we're going to multiply those two out. We're going to get 15 minus negative 27. I'm just going to change that to plus 27. And when we're all done with that one, we're going to get, what, 5 and 7 is a 2. We're going to get a 42 out of there. Okay, so that's how you evaluate and use your order of operations. Now, simplifying. I'm going to do number 4 here because there's a lot of negatives. Um, actually, I'll do both. Let's go over to 3 because I want to go over these x times x. We have 4x times x. That's going to be 4x squared. We have 4x times negative 2. That's negative 8x. Okay? Then we have to, remember, treat this like negative 5x. It's a negative 5, not minus. Let's treat it like a negative 5x. So negative 5x times 2x. You have negative 5 times 2, which is negative 10, and x times x is x squared. And then we have negative 5x times 4 will give us negative 20x. And now it's combined like terms. So the 4 minus 10x squared will give you a negative 6x squared. And we have a negative 8 minus 20. That should be negative 28x. Okay, I did that problem because of the squares in it. I'm going to do the next problem because of the negatives in it. So watch what we do here. We get negative 3 when we distribute. Minus 9n. And then the negative 5 times 3 is minus 15. And negative 5 times 3n is minus 15n. Now it's just a matter of combining like terms. I always start with the variables because I love standard form. So if I combine these two together, it's negative 9 minus 15. That's going to give me negative 24n. And then we have a negative 3 minus 15. That's negative 18. So I can write minus 18. Done with that one. There's numbers three and four. So that's the first part of the test. Next part involves dealing with fractions. So I'm going to review doing this. I always love to cancel as I'm going through it. So let's do, actually, let's do number five of this one. We have 18. All right. When in my head, this is what I do. I say, okay, we have 18 and we have two nines. I'm going to cancel these so that the 18 cancels with the nine and I'm left with the two up top and nothing in the bottom. That's going to leave two times two which is 4. So this is going to give us 4x. And then I do the same process all over again. So we have 18 times 1 ninth. Okay, that's going to be the second loop we have here. So how do we do that in our head? Well, the one, we have the 18 and the 9. They cancel. It's just like the first one. So we're going to get 2y minus 2y because there's a negative there. Okay, same process. I'm just going to talk through it. So we have 18 and 6. They will cancel. Leave a 3. 3 times 5 will give you a negative 15x. And then, oh, this is just a 3 over 1, so I just need to multiply those two. That's going to give me a negative 54. All right, so now it's combined like terms time. Uh, ooh, negative 54y. Sorry about that. So combined like, uh, like terms, that's going to give me negative, what do we get here? 11x minus 2y and minus 54 is minus 56y. Okay, so that's how you do those. All right, 7, solve each equation. Now, this is, I'm going to do 8 here, actually, because eight's a little more ugly. Look at all those 2s in there. But what you want to do is use the skill that we just went over so that you can clear out all the fractions. So this has 2s in the bottom. So I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by 2. And I'm going to multiply everything. So that's going to give me 2p. Let's go, 2p. Times, can I combine those first? 
I mean, it doesn't. You can if you don't, they're going to cancel. You're going to get one minus one, which is zero. But look, plus one half, minus one half, they cancel. All right. Let's do the two of the next one. So two times nine halves. That's going to give us twos cancel. You're left with a nine minus two times negative five p is negative ten p. All right. So I'm going to write this a little more conventionally here. Two p equals nine minus ten p. So I want to get all the value. Look, here's I'm going to get all the variables on one side. I'm going to add 10p to each side. Plus 10p. We're going to get 12p equals 9. Oh my goodness, p is going to equal 9 over 12. I can reduce that. That's 3 fourths. That's going to be my answer for that. Okay, so that's number 8. Um, 9 and 10 are the same, but you know, let, let's look at 10 here. Let's look at 10. Least common multiple here is a 6. So if I multiply through, I get 3m. See how I did that? 3 times 1m. Uh, the 6 is canceled there. So it's going to be left with a plus 1. Equals, what's the 6 going to do here? We're going to get 6 and 2 canceled. It's left with a 3. 3 times the 3 on top. That'll give us a 9m. And then the 6 is canceled there. We're left with 11. I'm not going to solve the rest of it, but that is the important step to clear out the fractions. It just makes your life so much easier. You don't have to, but that's the way to do it. That's the way we recommend it. All right, 11 and 12. I'm going to do number 11 here because of that negative r, which everyone always forgets about. So same rules as equations. You just draw the line down the middle and you make sure you keep it balanced. These fives will cancel. When we add five to each side, we are left with a negative r is greater than 12. Now what? Well, we have to divide by negative 1. If you remember the rule, when you divide by negative, that sign has to switch. So we're going to get r is less than negative 12. So we find it here. Okay, it's open circle. Remember that open circle, uh, let's see, what are those? That would be less than or greater than. And a closed circle would be less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. Okay, so this is just a less than. So it's an open circle. And r is less than. Which numbers are less? On the left or on the right, these numbers are. So students sometimes say, well, 10 is less than 12. Yeah, it is, but negative 10 isn't less than negative 12. So you have to understand your integers there. So how about one like number 14? That's kind of dangerous here. Let's. I'm going to distribute out and see what we get here. We get negative 10x plus 20 is greater than negative 2x minus 12. So now it's a matter of simplification. Let's move, uh, let's add 10x to each side. That is the proper thing to do. We get 10 is greater than 8x minus 12. So I add 12 to each side. 32 will be greater than 8x. Divide by 8. Okay, remember you can't just bring the x in front because there's a, an inequality here. And what this says is x is going to be less than 4. Okay, that's our answer. If you bring that x to the front, suppose you love right now like this, okay, you have to switch the sign. Okay, x is less than 4. We have to write it like that. Remember, we're always reading it from the variable. So x is less than 4. Once again, this is open circle. We're going to the left because it's less than. The numbers on the left are less than. All right, let's look at 15 because it's a compound inequality, which means we have several different inequalities put together. In this case, we have two. I'm going to rewrite it down here so we have lots of room. These you can solve just like regular equations. All right, so let's look. We want to get the p by itself, so that's in the middle part. I got to get rid of that two. So let's subtract two from each of the three different places. That's going to give me negative 45 is less than or equal to those twos could cancel. Okay, negative 5p, and we get 50. So now I divide by negative 5. Here's where we get a little bit tricky here. Dividing by negative 5, everything. We're staying balanced. We're going to get positive 9. We divide by a negative, so that sign has to switch. Remember that? P, that's got to switch because we divided by a negative. So I'm just going to rewrite this the way we normally like it. We put the smallest number there. We put P in the middle. And we read it as P is greater than negative 10, but P is less than or equal to 9. Okay, notice how those signs flipped over when I flipped the, put the 10 first and the 9s. Because 9's the biggest. And look, little Pac-Man's eating 9. There's Pac-Man. I love the 9. That's eventually where it's going. So down here, it's got to go and eat the 9 that way. 
All right, those are inequalities. Now we're talking about absolute value equations. The way they work, you need to solve, let's look at 20. You need to solve for the absolute value and then write two equations. So isolate, get this thing by itself. Get the absolute value by itself. Not there yet. So 1 minus x equals negative 12. I divide by negative 3. They cancel, so I get the absolute value of 1 minus x. Oops, that's an absolute value equals 4. At this point you do a little check. Is that positive? It has to be positive. Remember an absolute value cannot be negative. This is positive so we're going to move on. Here, let's pretend like this isn't here. We're going to move on to the next step. So we write 1 minus x equals 4 or 1 minus x equals negative 4. Those are our two equations. So we're going to solve each one down here. Subtract one from each side. I get negative x equals 3 or x equals negative 3. Okay, on the right, I subtract 1 from each side. I get negative x equals negative 5 or x equals 5. So our answers to this absolute value is 3, oop, negative 3 and 5. And there's that one. How fun is that? That is fun stuff. You can do the rest of them, though. You've got to solve for the absolute value. Last section, this is 1.4. We're solving for the uh, variable that's in parentheses. All right, so uh, let's start with 23 here. We have area equals 1 half base times height. We're going to get height by itself. First thing I would do is multiply both sides by 2, get rid of that half. Okay, so I'm going to get 2A is going to equal, that would cancel this, and we get BH. I want to get H by itself, so I divide by B. So we're going to get 2A over B is going to equal H. There's 23. And if H is by itself, you're done. Let's look at 24. Got to get Y by itself. You've seen problems like this before. Let's subtract 4X from each side. Draw a line. I'm going to get negative 5Y equals negative 4X plus 9. Why did I write that first? Because I love standard form. Loving it. Divide everything by negative 5. This is going to be an ugly answer, but what do we get? Y equals 4 fifths X. And this is plus a negative. I'm just going to write minus 9 fifths. That's negative, and we're all done with that one. Okay, let's do 25, and we'll call it a day. I want to solve for B, so I multiply both sides times, ooh, times K. K for Kelly. They cancel. A plus B equals K, and then I have to subtract A from each side. So B equals K minus A. That is easy stuff. Next part, application problems. Perimeter. Which one should we do? I'll do the triangle. That way you can do the hard one. So the perimeter, you just add up all the sides. So it's 5x plus 4 plus 2 plus 2x squared. That comes from right here. Okay. Plus, uh-oh, what happened there? Plus 2 plus 2x squared plus 7 minus x squared. Now let's just combine like terms. I'm going to start with the squareds. So we have 2 minus 1. That's just 1x squared, so they go away. We have a 5x, nothing else, so it's positive 5x plus 5x. We have plus 11. Oh, my B. There's a 2 in there as well. So we have x squared plus 5x plus 13. That is simplified as much as you can. Done with that type of problem. Here we go. Number 3, this is about practicing writing your expressions. All right, so most of these start with an initial value, which is the membership fee, $25. And you can download any single Mariah Carey here, 59 cents, okay, during the weekend. So it says write an expression that represents the total cost. All right, the total cost would be 25 plus each song that he downloads. So 59 times each song, each single. There you go, that's the expression. Assume Sully purchases 57 singles. You're going to plug that right into the S, and you can solve that problem. How about four? Uh, Bean loves to play sports, especially with his family. Okay, He will need to have between three and nine children inclusive. That means including three and including nine. Okay, So we're going to write a compound inequality. Let x equal the number of kids that Bean has. So, oops, let's go. Three has to be less than or equal to x, has to be less than or equal to nine. That's easy enough. Now write a compound inequality that represents the number of fingers. Let's go to F. Well, if each kid has, let's assume each kid has 10 fingers. That's that's pretty uh, safe assumption here. Then we're going to multiply all of these by 10. Okay, so we're going to get 30 less than or equal to, we'll call it F, less than or equal to 90. Okay, that will be the number of fingers. That's easy enough. How about 5? Almost done. Distance equals, uh, what do we get, 55T. T is hours traveled by car. 
can be D equals 20. G, oh, this is a good one here. So we have D is equal to 55T, and then D is equal to 20G. And the hint here is they want you to write an equation that expresses G as a function of T. Substitute for D. Look, D equals 20. Let's plug that in there. So we're going to get 20G equals 55T. They want us to write an equation that expresses G as a function of t. So that means that if you plug into t, you can figure out g. Well, let's do it like this. So g is going to equal 55 over 20 t. And if you want to simplify, you can divide each by 5. That's 11 fourths t, and we're all done there. And that is g as a function of t. And guess what? We're all done with that. That was a long review. Woo, that took forever. But we went through it all. Uh, you know, practice makes perfect. Hopefully this goes well. You don't want to bomb the first test. This is Mr. Kelly and Bomb Holder. Remember, it's nice to be important. It's more important to be nice. See you.